We've actually seen the surface before when we've had probes land there. The Soviet Union actually landed probes there in the 70s and the 80s, but it's been a long time. We've actually got this little probe called the Parker Solar Probe, and yes, it's a solar probe, so it's actually designed to go around the sun and have a look at some uh, sort of in the corona, which is the very outer atmosphere of the sun in detail, and they're very faint, wispy bits. And some scientists went, you know what? We've got to go around Venus anyway for what's called a gravity assist. So why don't we have a look and see if we can look at Venus? And really what they were trying to do is just measure the cloud speeds of Venus. But to their surprise, because they looked at the night side of Venus, they didn't have all that reflection coming off the clouds. And they actually saw in the very reddest visible range, they actually saw the surface of Venus. So this is 2021 and 20, um, 2020 and 21. And we've got this amazing video of the footage of of Venus. And what's really great is that you can actually pair up that with some radar imagery that was taken by NASA in the 90s. And it shows some fascinating geology, uh, you know, continents and plateaus and plains that we've just never really seen before in visible light. And Claire, a burst of radiation from the sun has knocked out 40 SpaceX satellites. Tell us about that. Oh, this is fascinating, actually. We're very interested in the sun. Actually, it has to do with the sun again. So the sun is coming up to its maximum. We sort of think it's going to happen about 2025. We're never quite sure. And when this happens, it gets really active and it sometimes spits out heaps of material. And this material is kind of charged. It's got lots of electrons and protons. And sometimes it's on its way to, her to Earth. And we actually had one of those on the 29th of January. And it takes a few days to get to Earth. And we have the uh, US uh, Space Weather Prediction Centre. And they said, oh, we think there's going to be a geomagnetic storm, which is when the atmosphere of Earth, a special area, in the atmosphere of Earth called the ionosphere and the magnet and magnetosphere, the, the magnetic field around the Earth, actually interact with these particles coming in and they can knock out satellites, they can affect astronauts and they can actually affect um, electronics on the Earth's surface. But in this case, it was really strange because these satellites were launched. There were 49 launched by SpaceX on February 3rd. And what happened is they sit in a lower orbit getting tested until they're ready to go up to a higher orbit. So they're about 210 kilometres above Earth's surface, sitting there getting tested, and then they get um, raised to 550 to be operational for the Starlink internet communication from SpaceX. So they're sitting there in a low Earth orbit, and what actually happened was this storm came along. We had a geomagnetic storm, and it interacted with the ionosphere. So that's where the, the atmosphere, it has all these little ions, and it basically put so much energy into the area that these satellites were that it became really, really dense. The air became really dense. And even though SpaceX commanded their satellites to actually kind of go edge on and try to fly, they ba the air was basically too dense and they just couldn't keep up there. And so what happened is they kind of had an unplanned re-entry and they burnt up and they lost 40 of them. Well, shifting to another topic, today is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. As a woman in STEM, how important is this day to you? Oh, this is this is really important. So in Australia, women are only 28% of workers in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. I'm one of those. In 2016, only 26% of media coverage of STEM in Australia featured women experts. Just three years later, that had grown to 33%. So things are changing. And I'm really proud to be part of that. And, you know, there are clear links between women's access to STEM education and careers and a burgeoning healthy society. You know, and that's linked to our R&D and industry as well and a healthy economy and this is seen time and time again in developing countries. I do a little bit of work in Kathmandu and that's one of the focuses of that school where we sort of do a graduate level program in astrophysics and there's no reason to think that that wouldn't translate to, to here in Australia and so this International Day is implemented by UNESCO and UN Women and it aims to promote full and equal access globally to participation in science for women and girls. And you might notice behind me, I have superstars of STEM. I've been very, very lucky to be part of this program. This is an initiative by uh, Science and Technology Australia. And a really exciting announcement actually came through yesterday where the government and in particular the Minister for Science, Melissa Price, and the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources has just agreed to invest another $2 million into this fantastic program. What does that mean? Well, this fantastic program program puts people like me in front of the TV, talking in front of you, talking to lots and lots of people about why science is so important and really trying to inspire the next generation of women and girls in STEM. Well, you've got something to celebrate. Have you done anything special to mark today? 
Well, uh, yes, actually, I met the Prime Minister today, today and the Minister for Women, Maurice Payne, uh, to talk about STEM. And, and we talked about a, a little, I took in a little eyepiece from a telescope and, and we talked about how that really represents an instrument to not only see the sky, but definitely an instrument to, to access science for some of these girls that probably wouldn't even have uh, science on their radar. So it was absolutely amazing to have that opportunity. And it's important to note that, you know, women in STEM, it's really a bipartisan issue. It's not political. The participation of women and girls in science and STEM, it just transcends any individual party pol politics. It's 100% important on its own. And it was absolutely brilliant on this important day to be able to, you know, bring that message home. Thanks, Claire Kenyon. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, you too.